Today's our last day talking about energy. Everything we do uses energy. Everything. Every task being done, every blink of an eye, every thought being thunk, every breath being breathed uses energy. And that energy is being used wisely or not, is useful or not, skillful or not, moves us in the direction of less suffering and more ease of well-being. And though energy in and of itself is ethically neutral, we can check in and assess for ourselves how we are using energy, how we are using this precious resource to navigate the storms of life. So there are two general ways of considering energy. And we've talked about them over this month, but I want to remind us of them. The first one is to assess for balance, balanced energy. Balanced energy is that sweet spot between four and six on a scale of one to 10. Using the Likert scale, Bill mentioned this, to see whether or not energy is balanced. If it's too low, we get drifty and dreamy or Attention gets dull or casual, and the body grows tired and heavy. When energy goes below a four, play with brightening the energy, uplifting the energy, bringing more to the system so that we can or reorient back to four to six. Take a full inhalation, shake out the cobwebs. Right? And when the energy goes above a six, how do we bring it back down into that sweet spot? Maybe we uh, bring attention to the exhalations and elongate them. Maybe we shake off the stress and the agitation, but do whatever we need to do to gently bring the energy back down. Balanced energy is where it's at. Feel for the not too tight, not too loose, the just right amount of energy in whatever task we are doing and keep adjusting, adjust accordingly. The second way of looking at energy is from the perspective of what is called right effort in the practice of the four great endeavors, which are when the wholesome is around, do your best to keep it around. When the wholesome is not around, do your best to, do your best to bring it around. When the unwholesome is around though, do your best to let it go. And when the unwholesome is not around, do your best to not invite it back in. No, 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 not now. Since we never know what's going to arise on and off the cushion, these four meditative moves can right the ship toward the North Star of goodwill and non-harm. And these moves, they're not our usual habit. Our usual habit is actually quite the opposite. We tend to dwell on the unwholesome, to ruminate, to sink into the vortex of, the, of expending energy on rehashing old stories or worrying about or planning for what's going to happen next. Our usual habit is not stopping long enough to smell the flowers, heck, to even notice them, or not lingering in the beauty of the day or the moment not receiving a compliment or kindness enough to let it land inside and register, enough to let it soothe the parched walls of our heart and be a balm for what ails us. This is why the Buddha's teachings are so radical. He suggests practicing doing the opposite of what our human habit is. <laughs> so when the wholesome is around, Learn how to use energy in the service of keeping it around. This is different than grasping. This is to kiss the joy as it flies. Don't try to freeze frame. Don't try to fixate on it. Try to hold on to it. But do, please, breathe deeply with and stay attentive to what is happening, to the joy as it's happening. So the residue of goodwill can register inside. Here we can begin to notice these mo the moments in our life and breathe with them. Oh, 
you know, let it feel good. You know, let the let the good feeling register inside. Let it brighten and widen the interior and appreciate that moment. Notice when a smile creeps or slips out of out from under the mouth's usual, usual position. <laughs> Notice how long it lingers. Maybe even to well after you've left the encounter. Right? Oh my goodness, notice this. Notice, breathe, feel the uplift, and make much of these precious moments of the day. We can do this. And notice when, uh, notice, noticing the wholesome, what it does is it entrains the noticing of more wholesomeness. This, is, this habit can serve us well right now. You know what I'm saying? Like in this particular moment in time, noticing these small moments of wholesomeness and bringing them forward. This particular meditative move, Rick Hansen talks about, he talks about noticing the good. It's a protection for the mind when we do that. It's a protection from the onslaught of stress and suffering of the dukkha. We want the mind to cultivate sukha, to cultivate uplift and joy and happiness. We want that so that we can balance out the dukkha, the stress that's really present. How much sukha do you need to hold the dukkha that is present? That's really good to pay attention to. Right? Because this is how we, how we weather the storms that will inevitably arise and that are, that are present even now. The next one is when the wholesome is not around, to use energy to bring it around. When a child is grumpy, sad, or is being careless with what they're, what they're doing, how they're attending to something, we as caregivers are likely to try to encourage a different way, try to help them to cheer up or encourage them or engage them in some way. The remedy depends upon what's causing the distress or the distraction. But it's wise to help that child to figure out how to move out of that space and wise for us to figure out how to do that for ourselves. So when our mind is in a bad mood, when our attention has grown casual, when we are heartbroken or upset, we can learn to release these mind states. We, we can learn to bring forward, bring forward the wholesome. Bad moods, Broken hearts, casual attention, deplete our energy. Notice this. Notice this so that we can make a course correction. Consider what would uplift and brighten right now. What would bring about a little bit more interest and energy? What would help balance this energy out, this feeling like, like it's dragging my sail? What brightens it up? This is all good practice. When the wholesome isn't around, Learn how to bring it around. It's for your welfare. Notice the funk. Adjust accordingly. Adjust towards moving towards ease of well-bringing, ease of well-being. Bring, uh, bring about goodness and kindness and carefulness when it isn't present. We can check in on this and do this for ourselves. Sometimes we need to step outside, literally outside to refresh the system in here because in here it feels too tight and we're, we don't know how to work with the energies that's coming up. But bring it outside and let, let Mother Nature help you hold and release the toxins. This is good practice. And when the unwholesome is around, find a way to let it go. And here we use energy wisely in the service of doing damage control. That's easier said than done. As I mentioned earlier, our habit is to keep the unwholesome around. We like to keep replaying the unkind event again and again. It's a deeply ingrained human habit. And so since we often can't drop it, it's best for us to learn different ways of moving the energy to contain it, to refrain from feeding the harmful mind states any further. For example, in my early years in retreat practice, I had this old story 
It was about a breakup that just kept coming. It replayed again and again. I'd sit down on the cushion and honestly, for weeks at a time, I felt like that was the only story that kept replaying. And, and in truth, I thought I was practicing correctly by just letting that story roll. And had I learned this particular instruction of don't, don't invite or don't, in, don't keep going when an, old, when an unwholesome habit is around, well, that would have been so helpful for me. It would have saved a lot of suffering. I had to learn that the hard way over many years. So when the unwholesome is around, notice that. Notice when you're suffering and see what you can do to get out from under that. How can you let it go? What can you do to shake it off, to breathe it out, to release and let go of it? This is like, like once you realize you're holding a hot coal, you learn how to drop it as quickly as possible to minimize the burn. All right. And then finally, when the unwholesome isn't around, hasn't arisen, learn how to not invite it in. Learn how to not reawaken the old grudges and the, um, the upsetting memories, right? When they're ready, they'll arise, right? But in the meantime, learn to notice their absence. Feel their absence and appreciate their absence. Notice when you actually feel content or at ease. And, and in that moment, you can see, oh my gosh, like no, nothing's bugging me. It feels okay in here. And then you can appreciate that experience more fully and get to know what really what that experience of ease or contentment feels like in that moment when nothing's bugging you. Since energy is implicated in everything we do, we can check in at any time and see how we're using it, see how it feels inside. We'll know whether or not it's skillful whether or not it's helpful. And that will help us to figure out when we should move away from suffering and when we should not invite it in and when we might want to make much of the ease and comfort that's present. Notice, breathe, adjust accordingly, moment by moment. Let's learn to make the course corrections. Let's learn to steer the boat away from, or toward freedom, away from stress and toward ease of well-being. And let's learn how to keep balancing out the energies in that nice four to six range so we can carry on in a way that's not exhausting. We can do this. It's for our welfare and for everyone we encounter. All right? Thank you for your kind attention. Okay, so let's... Uh, Let's play with energy again. And just uh, turn the attention kindly to the physical body, open it up, freshen it up, make some room. Yeah, just move slow as if the body is moving through water and just open up the areas that feel tight or collapsed or cranky. Right. What does your body feel like right now? And give it the kind of tender, loving care it needs to feel more comfortable. Take your time. This is part of setting up the practice. And um, keep feeling into what the body needs to settle down and settle into stillness and let go of any extra work. Lightly close the eyes and let the attention turn into the interior and feel into how the body is breathing right now.
And maybe just begin by taking a, a few deeper than usual inhalations and deeper than usual exhalations and then let the breath find its own rhythm. This opens up the breath body. Just gently watching over the settling process. And softening the gaze, softening the heart, feeling into that quality of caring attention. As if feeling into comfort and ease in the present moment was the most important thing right now. And keeping attention out of the mind, feel into how breath is moving inside, perhaps massaging the interior with each inhalation and exhalation. Feel into a breath energy that feels soothing and calming. Thank you. 
not too tight, not too loose, just enough energy to maintain alert, relaxed, caring attention.
And in the last five minutes, letting go of the meditation instruction and just settling back into being. Breathe with and in and through the softening. Notice any comfort and ease and breathe with that. And drop in the awareness of all of us sitting here with you and you sitting here with us, each of us being just as we are, making room for ourselves and each other. And appreciate the gift of that. Let that be a parched, be a balm for the parched walls of the heart. <laughs> 